In this video, we take a look at a story that took place in the year 2021 and involved two countries far apart. Shanai Brooke Edwards, 31, was an Australian citizen and avid traveler. One of her travels took her to the Eastern European country of Georgia, where Shanai really liked and where frightening events happened to her. Shanai was born in 1989 in Warrnambool, Australia, where she lived with her parents and older brother Tyson. There is little information online about her youth and upbringing, but here is how her loved ones described her. Shanai was an adventurer who loved being amongst nature, a keen hiker, motorcyclist, and a genuine kind-hearted soul, an animal lover. She was a happy free spirit, she moved through life making the kind of deep, sincere connections that most of us reserve only for a select few. She extended generosity, patience, love and kindness to all who crossed her path, to name a few. The homeless she shared cafe leftovers with at her shift's end in Melbourne, the orphan children she taught in Colombia, the Cambodian children she taught English, the Japanese students she tutored, and most recently, the pregnant stray cat that adopted Shanai and decided to become a mother on her terrace in Georgia. Shanai came to Georgia, which had long attracted her with its nature, history, and sights, in 2019. Shanai's boyfriend, Maudi El Sayed, was also scheduled to fly to this Eastern European country. He was a Lebanese national whom she had met during one of her travels. They had broken up for a while, but when Shanai lived in Georgia, they began to communicate online and then realized that they still had feelings for each other and so decided to reunite. El Sayed wanted to fly to Georgia, but could not do so because that country's borders were closed to people who had not been vaccinated. Georgia is an ancient, proud, and hospitable country known for its welcoming locals, the majestic beauty of nature and ancient temples, and its amazingly delicious cuisine. Shanai had high expectations for her trip to Georgia, and those expectations were fully met. She was happy in the country and lived there for almost two years before her next outing went awry. Shanai lived in the Georgian capital of Tbilisi and taught English, which helped her earn a living and at the same time, she could find free time to travel around the country and visit new and interesting places. Over time, she found like-minded friends who were travel enthusiasts like her. On July 29, 2021, she posted this photo on her social media account and captioned it with one word, joy. The photo was taken during a scenic ride on a motorcycle. Shanai was very fond of motorcycles. The next day, July 30th, 2021 was sunny, so Shanai decided to take a hike up Mtats Minda. Please don't judge me too harshly if I mispronounce the name of this place. Mtats Minda, which means holy mountain, is located almost in the center of the Georgian capital and is one of its main attractions. On the slope of the mountain, in the thickets of evergreen vegetation, is the Temple of St. David. Matatsminda is a popular destination for tourists and city residents. On the 730-meter-high mountain, there are observation decks overlooking Tbilisi, an amusement park, a Ferris wheel, and a restaurant. For the past 11 months, Shanai had been renting a house near the mountain. According to her friends, she often took walks in the wooded area and never had any problems or threats to her personal safety. On July 30th, 2021, she left the house at approximately 3.30 p.m. Surveillance cameras captured the moment. She walked leisurely through the city streets toward the hiking trail. She was last seen near the Church of St. Michael of Tver, which is located at the foot of Mount Matats Minda and is a kind of starting point for hiking. In the evening, she was supposed to meet some friends at a cafe in the capital, but she never showed up. Attempts to contact her by phone were fruitless, and then Shanai's friends decided to file a missing persons report with the police. At about the same time, a friend of Shanai's who lives in California sounded the alarm. At 4.32 p.m., Shanai called her, and when she answered the phone, she heard her screaming, Please let me go, okay? Just let me go. You could tell that Shanai was being attacked by someone, and she was asking to be left alone. The call was disconnected, and when Shanai's friend began to call back, no one answered. Different sources describe in different ways what Shanai's friend who lives in California did next. 
Some news outlets wrote that she posted to a Facebook group where members were people from different countries currently living in Georgia, and she asked someone to contact the police to report the disturbing call. Other sources say that Shania's friend herself contacted the Georgian police and told them everything. Whatever the case, it is certain that within hours after Shania made the frightening phone call, the Georgian police became aware of it and immediately began to check the information they had received. Several hundred police officers and volunteers were involved in the search. The area to be searched was large and so numerous groups combed the slopes of Mount Matatsminda. The police used search dogs and drones. Shanai could not be found before sunset. She had not returned home, her phone was off, and she had not gone to any of the local hospitals for help. This was not a good sign, as was confirmed the next day. Unfortunately, on July 31st, after an intensive search, 31-year-old Shanai Brooke Edwards was found dead near a hiking trail. The perpetrator tried to cover up the evidence of the crime, so he hid the body under tree branches and leaves. The crime weapon, a knife, was found not far from the body. Below on the mountainside, Shanai's phone was soon found. On further inspection of the crime scene, police found an old rusty shovel, a fireplace, used needles, and many empty bottles. Georgia's interior minister told local media that the police had some information that was not disclosed in the interest of the investigation. The ministry and police officers are doing everything they can to find the perpetrator, he said. During the forensic examination of Shanai's body, they counted 13 stab wounds, five of which were in the neck area, which to the police meant only one thing. The perpetrator, without a doubt, intended to take the young woman's life. There were also signs of strangulation on her neck. After Shanai's death was officially confirmed by the authorities, the media reported that the crime had been motivated by lust. The Georgian police, however, denied this information, as the forensic medical examiner did not find any signs of a crime against the woman's integrity. Shanai's enraged boyfriend, Maudi El Sayed, has vowed to track down the culprit no matter how long it takes and get back at him. Right now, I have one mission in life, revenge, he said. I don't care if I spend the rest of my life behind bars, justice will be served and the criminal will suffer as much as Shanai did, he added. Shanai's death was a heavy blow to her friends and a particularly difficult experience for her family, who lived on another continent. The relatives had to solve the problem of transporting the body home and the police had to find the culprit. No doubt crime prevention and finding criminals is a direct responsibility of the police, but in this case there was another important factor. Georgia's revenue from tourism exceeds $1 billion a year, and the fact that one of the travelers lost their life in a popular place, the capital of the state, could have had a negative impact on the entire tourism industry. The police interviewed more than 200 people, including friends, co-workers, Shanai's neighbors, and park employees and visitors. Routes were studied, as well as video footage of her movements that day. One local woman wrote in an expat Facebook group that she heard a woman screaming on the trails below Matatsminda Park about an hour after Shanai left home. Another woman wrote in the same group that she witnessed a disturbing sight on the mountain. She claimed that exactly one day before Shanai went missing, she had seen a man aggressively copulating with a woman in approximately the same area where the crime had taken place. At the same time, the laboratory examined the crime weapon and found a male DNA sample on it. No matches were found in the Georgian police database, so the samples were sent to 194 Interpol member states to be checked in the databases of those countries. Interviews with witnesses showed that Shanai had no enemies, had no conflicts with anyone, and had no contact with people of dubious reputation. This may have meant she was a random victim of a crime for which the motive was unclear. The police worked painstakingly. Genetic samples were taken from several dozen people who could theoretically have been involved in the crime. All were subjected to rigorous analysis. As a result of complex and multifaceted investigative efforts, the circle of alleged perpetrators was narrowed until a DNA match was found. Forty days after the death of Shanai Brooke Edwards, Georgia police issued the following statement. Based on the evidence obtained during the investigation, including testimony, surveillance tapes, genetic tests, and other evidence, 
a man born in 1988 was arrested on September 8 this year as the defendant in accordance with the decision of the court. The detainee was Georgian citizen Rafael Mursakulov. His lawyer told reporters that Mursakulov denies all the charges against him, namely robbery and taking the life of Shanai Brook Edwards. He pleads not guilty. He had nothing to do with the case. I've already seen him, we've talked, and we've decided on a position. He's exercising the right to remain silent, the lawyer said. When information about the suspect's identity leaked to the press, Mursakulov's image was shown on television. After that, a woman from the Georgian capital wrote a post on her Facebook page stating that her friend had been attacked by two wild beasts on Mount Matatsminda a few months ago. Although the police knew the identity of the perpetrators, the case was shelved. As the woman claimed in her post, one of the attackers was Rafael Mursakulov. The author of the post suggested that if the police had done their job well, the Australian girl would probably be alive. As for those data of Rafael Mursakulov, which he himself openly shared on his Facebook page, the man was an activist of the ruling Georgian Dream Party. On September 10, 2021, the Tbilisi court refused to release Mursakulov on bail. While he was awaiting trial in custody, police officers, in addition to the irrefutable physical evidence they had, obtained a no less important testimony. It was decided that after the attack on Shanai Brook Edwards, Mursakulov returned home and told his brother and his wife about the crime, but warned them that if they told anyone about it, their young child would suffer the same fate as Shanai. In October 2021, the Edwards family published a letter describing what Shanai was like and thanked everyone for their support. In particular, they thanked Georgia for their financial assistance in repatriating Shanai's body and the Georgian people for their continued attention, love, and support during this difficult and tragic time. The first hearing on the case took place in February 2022. Under Georgian law, Mursakulov faced 16 to 20 years in prison. He chose not to exercise his right to remain silent and pleaded guilty at the trial to robbery, but denied the charge that he acted intentionally when he took Shanai's life. However, the prosecutor didn't think so. In his opinion, the number of stab wounds spoke to the defendant's intent to take the victim's life. He stabbed Shanai Brook 13 times, including five in the neck, indicating intent to take her life. Moreover, after his knife broke, the defendant strangled the victim, the prosecutor said. In turn, the defense insisted on qualifying the crime as robbery. Mursakulov pleaded guilty to robbery, and that was the motive. He repented of what he had done, said his lawyer. Also, the defense insisted that Mursakulov has mental problems and acted in an abnormal state. Meanwhile, the examination found Mursakulov sane, so the court had the right to impose a real punishment on him, depending on the qualification of the crime. According to the prosecutor, after the arrest, traces of potent drugs were found in Mursakulov's blood, but this in no way detracts from his guilt. Mursakulov himself, in his last statement, admitted guilt and apologized to Shanai Brook Edwards' family. I apologize to this country, to the people. I apologize to this woman's family. It's a loss I can't make up for. Just forgive me. Whatever the sentence, I will be silent and I will not appeal it. I apologize, said Mursakulov, and cried. The alleged motive was the desire of the defendant to seize Shanai's iPhone 12. He failed to do so because she threw the phone into a ravine. In any case, only two people knew about what happened that day, and one of them will tragically never speak again. Sentencing was postponed at the request of the prosecution because the victim's brother, Tyson Edwards, wanted to be present at the sentencing. The family of Shanai Brook Edwards issued a statement urging the Georgian justice system to sentence Rafael Mursakulov to life imprisonment. We lost our beautiful girl, incredibly tragically. She left many friends and family members disappointed and devastated. We are proud of all the successes that Shanai has achieved in many countries during her short life, the statement of Shanai Brook Edwards' family reads. At the trial held on March 9, 2022, Rafael Mursakulov was found guilty. Shanai's brother Tyson, on behalf of the family, 
once again asked that the defendant be sentenced to life imprisonment. Mursakulov apologized to Tyson Edwards, saying that he's not that kind of person and that he just got into this situation. As a result, 33-year-old Rafael Mursakulov was sentenced to 20 years in prison. According to Georgian law, 20 years is the maximum sentence he could receive.